Hello everyone. Well, it's another carpet washer to unbox, assemble and have a first look at today. This is the Vax Compact Power Carpet Washer. If you're watching this in the USA or Canada, you'll know this under the Hoover brand and it's called Power Dash Pet. But basically, it's the same model. Hoover and Vax are owned by the same parent company, so they do share designs across the pond. So I was quite uh, surprised how light this box was when the courier handed it to me. So this is Vax's smallest and lightest carpet washer according to the box. Great for cleaning high traffic areas and small spaces. So if you have a small cluttered home, this could be for you. Or if you have a larger home, you could use this as a spot picker upper. If you've got pets, if you've got kids, often um, pets can have accidents, kids can have accidents, and you could use this as the go-to machine. It's a bit easier and lighter to handle than some of the bigger cleaners. It'll be interesting to see how well this performs, and I will be taking it on location and uh, seeing how well it cleans some carpets. So we've got the instruction manual. This is, uh, according to Vax, their best solution. You get a small bottle, 250 ml of Vax Platinum Professional Solution. I do advise buying a larger one. This won't. This might do one carpet in a small room, but I always advise buying extra so you don't have to stop cleaning. There is some assembly because we've got the handle here and also the metal part of the handle. This is the clean water tank. And then finally, we've got the cleaner itself. Just pull it out. And already fitted to the cleaner is this which is the dirty water tank so obviously a little bit of assembly is required before you can use this machine so let's do that now here are all the components for this vax carpet washer and i'm pleased to say we don't need any tools or spanners to assemble the machine i think it'll be a very easy job okay let's assemble it first we need to assemble the upper handle grip into the lower handle the upper handle grip goes in this way with the writing on this label towards the back and also this little silver button needs to be at the back and at the bottom. So basically this is the back of the handle where we have the cord storage hook. Just insert it into the top of the handle until it clicks into position. Now we need to insert the assembled handle assembly into the machine, making sure that the coloured part of the handle is at the front. So all you have to do is guide it into the top of the machine here until it clicks into position. When you first unbox the machine, you'll find the cap to the clean water tank taped to it. So obviously you need to remove it and then this cap just screws on to the bottom of the clean water tank there. So obviously this is the tank that you fill with warm water and Vax carpet cleaning solution. When it's full you ensure that the cap is tight and then it just goes into the top of the machine here. The 6.7 meter cord stores at the back of the machine on two hooks, a fixed lower hook and a swivel top hook. Now with the carpet washer fully assembled, I'll just take you on a quick guided tour to show you the main features and functions of this cleaner. This is the business end of the Vax Compact Power carpet washer, incorporating an Aquaspin brush bar, heat blast technology that directs warm air onto the carpet to assist drying, and a removable nozzle for easy cleaning. This is the underside of the machine showing the Vax Aquaspin brush bar. And for a compact carpet washer, I'm pretty impressed with the amount of brushes on this machine. They're pretty dense, there's a lot of them, and they're relatively stiff, so it should make a good job of cleaning carpets, but obviously we'll find that out in the demo. 
One thing to point out though, this is a belt driven machine and you can see here there's an area where your carpet will not get brushed so it doesn't give you a full width clean across the front of the nozzle. So you're going to have to remember to overlap your strokes otherwise you'll get a streaky result. It's always a good idea to clean and dry your carpet washer after every use so it's ready for the next time and I'm glad to see a removable front cover on this compact power. To remove it you simply just pull it up here and this whole front nozzle comes away so it's much easier to clean especially if you've got pets you might find hairs or other fibers get trapped in this nozzle but having it removable makes it easier to run under the tap. What I will say though as with this and any carpet washer vacuum thoroughly before you wash your carpets that way you'll minimize the amount of debris that ends up in the nozzle so that comes off for easy cleaning but the brush sadly doesn't look like it's very easy to remove you might need tools to remove that for a thorough clean so once the nozzle has been cleaned we can just locate it at the front and clip it back in ready for next time there are two pedals at the back of the machine. The blue one switches the machine on and off and the grey one reclines the handle. This is the dirty water tank that collects all the soiled solution. It's easy to remove from the machine. Simply put your hand under this lip here and press on the big grey button and you can take the tank out for emptying. One thing I've noticed about the dirty water tank is you can't take it apart to give it a thorough clean which is a bit of a disadvantage. To empty it you've got this quick pour spout so you just remove that and tip the dirty water down your drain or toilet and obviously you need to make sure that that's closed properly and sealed otherwise you'll get reduced suction at the nozzle. But yes, looking round it, there is no way of taking this apart. You've got a float valve. You can just about see through the clear container. This blue float valve will rise up as the tank fills with the dirty solution and it will cut the suction off, which will indicate you need to empty it. One tip for cleaning this tank and any other carpet washer where you can't take the tank apart. What I do, I fill it with hot water, not too hot, and some biological washing powder. Now the powder seems to work better and it has to be biological. So just put maybe a small scoop, maybe a tablespoon in there, fill that up with hot water, close the stopper, then give it a good shake upside down. Now there are holes in this, so don't shake it over your best Persian rug, shake it where it, it doesn't matter, over the bath or over your sink. And then you could leave it to stand overnight and rinse it out the next day and you'll find a lot of the gunk is removed and it'll smell a lot better. This is especially important if you've used the machine to pick up after pet messes or if somebody's been ill in the house. So that is one disadvantage. I can see you cannot take this apart at all. I can't even see any screws. You might be able to dismantle it, but it doesn't say that you can in the instruction book. Once you've emptied the dirty water tank and ensured that the grey stopper is fully in place, you simply reinsert it on the machine and push it back until it clicks into position. I'm going to be doing a full demonstration of this carpet washer in the very near future, but to end the video I'm going to fill it with warm water and solution and just go over a small area of my carpet just to get an idea of how it performs and how noisy it is. You'll notice on the solution tank there are two lines, one for the water up to 40 degrees and the other one for the solution. Okay, so I've filled the clean water tank with some warm water and solution and I've ensured that the stopper is fully in place. One thing to note, this does have a flat bottom which is useful because it'll stand up on its own so it makes filling it much easier. So once it's full, and you've got the stopper in place, just give it a little bit of a mix to ensure that the solution and water is thoroughly combined. And then you just place it on the carpet washer this way around. You've got two recesses for your hand and then it just fits into the top. Just make sure it's pushed down. This trigger on the handle releases the carpet cleaning solution. 
The best method of using this carpet washer is to squeeze the trigger on the forward pass and release it when you pull the machine back. This will ensure that you don't overwet your carpet. I've cleaned about four square meters of my carpet and my carpet didn't look very dirty but I must say it has brought the pile up. There's not much pile on this carpet but I can certainly see where I've been. Now obviously it's damp but it's not too bad. Let's have a look at the dirty water. I'm not expecting it to be filthy but I can see already that there is some dirt in there. Now I'm not expecting this water to be very dirty because the carpet was shampooed not that long ago but that isn't bad at all. You can see that that water has dirt in it from a carpet that looked clean. So it hasn't done a bad job but obviously you want to see a more extreme demonstration and hopefully I'll be able to show you that in the next video because I'll be taking this carpet washer to a different house I don't know how clean or dirty the carpets are going to be. I don't know if they've been cleaned on a regular basis. So it'll be interesting to see what this machine picks up. But first impressions are pretty good. I may do an extreme demo with this. I do have a test rug that I've been making dirty for several months. Um, if it cleans that, it will be very, very good. But first impressions, this is very noisy. I have to say that. So I hope any of you headphone listeners have still got your hearing. I should have put a warning in the video. But so far, apart from its noise, it seems to do a good job. It seems to extract a fair bit of the water. It brings up the pile. And above all, it is very, very light. Before I end this video, I'm going to do something I've never done before in a carpet washer demonstration. And thinking back, it's something I really should have been doing. Now that is to see how much water this cleaner can remove. Now obviously I went over a small area of carpet, trigger pulled for the front pass and released for the back pass, but also I went over the carpet several times until I couldn't see any more water coming up the front of the nozzle. So I've managed to extract what I think is the maximum amount of liquid from this area of carpet. Now obviously this tank was full, so what I'm gonna do is fill up this tank if I can. I really need a funnel for this. It might go over the carpet, but I'll be able to suck it up again. In fact, I'll go and find a funnel because this is going to go everywhere. It'll be interesting to see how much of the dirty water ends up in the clean water tank. So if this is an efficient carpet washer, it will be almost full. But if it's not too efficient, it might only be half full. I'll soon find out. I'll just go and get my uh, funnel so I don't spill all the dirty water all over this cleaned carpet. Okay, here goes. I've got the funnel, so with any luck, I'll be able to get all the water out of the dirty tank into the clean one. I'm not sure how easily it's going to pour though. There's no pouring lip, that's the only trouble. Careful. Oh dear, but I've spilt some, but not much.
nearly there. I think that's almost everything. A few more drops. There we go, so the dirty water tank is now empty. And I'm quite surprised it hasn't done as well as it seemed to do. This is the water extracted and it is less than half of the water I put down. So there's this much water still in this small area of carpet. Now I did go over it as many times as I could until I could see no more water being removed. So obviously this is a bit lacking when it comes to extracting the water. Now carpets vary, the material carpets are made of varies. Some carpets will hold on to water more. This is a, a man-made carpet. If you're cleaning a wool carpet, they tend to hold on to the moisture more. So you might even find less water extracted with a wool carpet. So that, yeah, that's not so good, is it? All that it's picked up, but it's left all this in the carpet. Mmm, not good at all. Now, before I go, I have seen this machine demonstrated. I think it was on the HSN shopping channel and it was the Hoover version. And the lady there, Julie Truster, I think she's called, she did, I don't know if it was this model or another Hoover model, but she put down loads of water and sucked it up and revealed that the machine picked up most of the liquid. Well, if you look at the test carpet she uses, it's one of those rubber backed mats. And of course, that will not hold on to water. Water does not soak into those. So I'm not surprised she got that result. This is a real carpet in my living room. And yeah, it will be dry overnight, but that's surprising. That's something in future, all my demonstrations, I'm gonna do this test. I'm gonna see how much water each cleaner extracts, but I'm pretty disappointed with that after my initial first reactions to this machine. But anyway, conditions vary, carpets vary. You might get more water. If you spend a little bit more time going over the carpet, you might extract a little bit more than I managed to. Well, that's the end of today's video. If you want to check out all the other carpet washers I've demonstrated over the years, you'll find a playlist on my channel. Please subscribe and you'll be updated every time I upload a new floor care video, which will include a full demonstration of this machine in action and possibly a torture test if you want it. So if you have any comments or questions, please comment below and I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.